Here's your wrestling news for April 13th, 2022. And your headlines for today include Brock Lesnar set to return during Money in the Bank 2022. Natalia returns to NXT and puts the women's division on notice after turning on Cora Jade. What happened with Roman Reigns and the Bloodline after Raw? Braun Strowman, Adam Schur, picks up a major fight with Buff Bagwell. The world's not ready. Huge first time ever match teased for Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Top indie star to make WWE debut with new ring name. Kane Velasquez issues first statement since arrest. Ezekiel poses with Elias and more. We're kicking off today with Brock Lesnar, who hasn't been seen in WWE since WrestleMania 38. Losing the main event title unification match to Roman Reigns, Lesnar reportedly left Mania immediately after his match and took a private jet back to his home in Canada. WWE haven't confirmed on TV when the Beast Incarnate will be back, but it's been rumored that he'll be appearing at Money in the Bank later this year. This year's show will be the biggest Money in the Bank event in history, as it'll happen at Las Vegas' Allegiant Stadium with a capacity of around 65,000 seats, and WWE is doing all they can to get fans to buy tickets. PW Insider reports that WWE has been distributing promotional material in the Las Vegas area, and Lesnar is being advertised for the show. Lesnar isn't the only big name teased as Roman Reigns, Raw Women's Champion Bianca Belair, Ronda Rousey, and SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair are all being promoted for Money in the Bank. It's unclear what Lesnar will do at the show as his feud with Roman Reigns is finished, but he does have a history of winning the Money in the Bank briefcase. In 2019, Brock was a last-minute entry into the match and went on to win the men's ladder match, later cashing in on then-Universal Champion Seth Rollins. We won't know what the plan is for Money in the Bank until we get closer to the July 2nd show, but expect the Beast Incarnate's return for later this year. NXT 2.0 news now as Cora Jade was not in a good mood after she came up short at Stand and Deliver. As one of the three challengers to NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose, Jade didn't fulfill her childhood dream at the April 2nd event, but her promo was cut short. When speaking about how the generation of Jade will one day be upon us, the young superstar was cut off by the veteran Natalia, who received a huge ovation from the fans of the Performance Center. Natalia was full of emotions as she spoke about first coming across Jade as a fan during a 2011 WWE Live event and congratulating the young superstar when she debuted for NXT. Speaking about the future, Natalia said that Jade is the future of NXT, but the future looks bleak and slapped Jade to the mat, confirming her status as a heel. Applying the sharpshooter to a chorus of boos, Natalia held the hold in until officials finally got her to break it up and later on agreed to face Tatum Paxley, who has been trying to prove herself to the diamond mine. Paxley vs. Natalia has been confirmed for next week's show, which will mark the third generation superstar's first match in NXT since January 14th, 2015. In a post-show video, Jade was seen icing her knee and told Mackenzie Mitchell that the old saying is true about never meeting your heroes. There is no word on when the Jade vs. Natalya match will happen, but after reports of WWE wanting to have at least one main roster star in NXT 2.0 each week, it's now the Queen of Hearts' turn to make an impact on the paint-splattered brand. Over to Raw, which this week saw an appearance by Roman Reigns and the Bloodline, who closed out the show for fans watching at home. For the fans in Detroit, though, they got a special treat, as after Raw, Reigns and the Bloodline faced Drew McIntyre, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods in a dark match. This marked Reigns' first match since becoming the undisputed WWE Universal Champion at WrestleMania, but it was the faces who would get the win. After evading a spear from Reigns, McIntyre connected with the Claymore kick on Jey Uso to get the pinfall victory. During the match, some fans at ringside taunted Paul Heyman, which led to a special moment between the special counsel and his tribal chief as Reigns consoled his manager, giving him a hug while asking fans to pipe down. This was a fun moment, but one that's happened before as Heyman has recreated the exact spot at other dark matches in recent months. With the Usos expected to face RK Bro in a tag title unification match at WrestleMania Backlash, this loss isn't what the Bloodline needed, and we'll have to see how they bounce back on this Friday's SmackDown. Since Control Your Narrative was announced, fans have poked fun at the upstart promotion, which so desperately wants to be this generation's Fight Club. EC3 and Adam Schur have been especially defensive of their promotion on social media, and now Buff Bagwell has had some fun at CYN's expense. On Twitter, it all started when Bagwell joked about joining Control Your Narrative, but the feeling he had turned out to just be gas. 
Schur did not see the funny side of this as he said that Bagwell was trying to look edgy and claimed that Buff once asked to take a picture with him, branding the WCW alum a mark. Bagwell responded that he did ask for a picture as he's always had a fascination with clowns and encouraged Schur not to be so sensitive over a joke on Twitter. The former Braun Strowman didn't waste time in escalating things as he posted an image of an article about Bagwell's trouble with the law and how he has over 10 charges of driving misdemeanors to his name. Not one to take this lying down, Buff responded with a photo of his own, namely Schur's rap sheet after he was arrested for driving under the influence in 2013, shortly after signing with WWE. Schur admitted that he did get a driving ticket on a boat, but said that the rest of the post was faked, including the mugshot as he said he paid his ticket. Despite calling Bagwell a mark and referencing his problems with the law, Schur concluded by saying that wrestlers should stick together and that the internet wrestling community is toxic enough as it is and that he shouldn't have gone after Buff over social media over a joke. With rules such as, wrestlers don't fight their opponents, they fight themselves, and you're in control, it's not hard to see why some fans have found CYN cringy so far. And while Schur and Buff seemingly ended things on good terms, don't expect Buff Bagwell on any of their shows. For years, there's been rumors of Roman Reigns facing The Rock, which, after not happening at WrestleMania 38 as once discussed, is now being rumored for WrestleMania 39. Of course, Rock's busy schedule in movies and on TV has proven to be an obstacle for WWE, but now it's the Brahma Bull who has teased the bout in his own way. On a recent episode of Young Rock, which chronicles his rise to greatness, fans saw a young Roman Reigns who insisted on facing his cousin. In response, Young Rock said a match of that magnitude could only happen at WrestleMania, something WWE is certainly hoping will happen next year. After dispatching of Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 38, Reigns has decimated nearly every possible contender for his throne, but if this episode of Young Rock is anything to go by, his next WrestleMania opponent will be the most electrifying opponent to date. Last month, WWE announced their latest class of Performance Center signings, which included former Ring of Honor Women's World Champion Roxy. Trained by Booker T and just 20 years old, Roxy has a bright future ahead of herself in the ring, and she now has her new WWE name. At last night's NXT Level Up taping, Roxy made her on-screen debut as Roxanne Perez in an incredibly quick turnaround from signing with the company to appearing on TV. Jacobs was also signed to WWE in the same performance center as Perez, and she may hold the record for the fastest someone has gone from signing to her in-ring debut. Roxanne Perez has confirmed the new name on social media, changing her handles on Twitter and Instagram to Roxanne WWE, and time will tell how she does in the company. Now in February, Kane Velasquez was arrested after firing a gun at a vehicle and has been charged with attempted murder of those inside the car. Velasquez had attempted to shoot a man who had been accused of sexual misconduct with a minor, reportedly related to the former UFC fighter, but missed the person he was trying to shoot and hit his father-in-law, which resulted in non-life-threatening injuries. This week, Velasquez gave his very first statement on the matter over Twitter. In Spanish, Velasquez thanks people for their support and said that this story is complex, with more information still to come out. A translation reads, to everyone that's expressed your support, my family and I will never be able to thank you enough. From the bottom of our hearts and the depths of our souls, we are forever grateful for your love. Your selfless gestures and kindled words have given me strength in my darkest times. This story is complex and slowly unraveling as we speak. To the true victims of this case, may God give you the strength to come forward. Though it is most difficult to relive the pain that has happened to you, in speaking the truth, justice will be served and your own true healing will start. I will never stop helping or loving my community and all of you. Thank you for loving me." After being denied bail on March 7th, the former UFC fighter turned wrestler and briefly WWE superstar could face 20 years in jail if found guilty. And we'll keep monitoring this story as more information comes out. And we're ending with Ezekiel, who debuted in WWE on the Raw after WrestleMania 38 and has made it clear that he is not Elias. Claiming to be Elias' brother, Ezekiel's claims have come under great scrutiny by Kevin Owens, but we now have photographic proof. On Instagram, Ezekiel shared a photo of himself with Elias and claimed that his haters will say that the picture's been photoshopped. Madcap Moss weighed in by saying he recalls taking this picture, as Ezekiel is showing no signs of letting up in his claims that he is, in fact, not Elias. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, 
Thanks for watching.